So it says a stumbaugh, which is weird considering it's a German last name, and you would say some brown eyed girl with brown hair who looks super Mexican has a German last name. Well, um, I'm adopted. So um, my topic for today is about the bill. Um, uh, my proposition is about the bill Governor Brown passed earlier this month, October 4, 2013, and how it's going to be beneficial to families in California. So I'm in a rare situation where my um, mom and dad were together until I was two years old, and then she decided to come out of the closet. And there was no need for my parents to get divorced because financially it'd be strained. So they decided to just go their separate ways. Dad was still in the picture, but mom um, found a partner who became my other mother. and. From there, she, that became kind of my family, but still saw dad on the side. Well, in 2008, um, there was an opening for gay marriage to, for gays to be married, allowed to be married. And so my mom wanted to get married, which meant that she had to get divorced, but therefore, um, the, I was underage, so they had to file for legal custody, which there was no, like, no, uh, one in favor of that, but at the same time, my stepmom wanted, my other mom wanted um, custody of us too, because that is the family I grew up with. So, but you can't have more than two people on your birth certificate at that time. And so, my dad gave up his legal custody, and then um, I became Stumbaugh. And um, this would have been beneficial, this bill would have been beneficial at the time for me, which is a special case, which is kind of rare. Um, to have three legal um, guardians at that time, because there was no um, 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 no reason for for my father to give up his legal um, guardianship. So I'm going, um, um, and it leads to the new family dynamics in this generation. Um, California is known to be a super diverse state and um, how the bill isn't as unstructured as people assume when they hear that you're going to have more than two legal guardians. They assume that you're going to have ten legal guardians. Your grandma, your next door neighbor, and whatnot can become your legal guardian if they um, want to. So, my first point, um, quoted in the New York Times, Brad Duckett, President of Pacific Justice Industries, was opposed to the bill because uh, claiming that it's an attack on the traditional family. Well, what exactly is the traditional family? Um, um, the divorce rate in California is 75%, and the rate um, of uh, remarried is 40%. So, I mean, everybody has somebody that they know who has divorced parents or whatnot. So, the t traditional family this day, is, uh, you know, mom and dad being married forever in an ideal world, yeah. It's just not rare. I mean, it's not common anymore. Um, so, so divorce-wise, you have mom, dad get separated. That's a seventy-five percent rate, and then you have them get remarried, and their stepmom, stepdad. You already have four different um, um, kind of parental figures, um, and then you have same-sex marriage and adoption, which is a lot more common since California has become a same-sex state. And um, the bill was based on an actual um, lesbian couple that was that got together, but one of them was pregnant, and they the father signed off his legal custody because the, the, they wanted to be together. And um, a year later, one of them got hospitalized, and the other got put in jail. And uh, the child had no legal guardian that was available to them anymore. So. Um, the child went into foster care. And you already have about, you have 6,500 uh, 6, children in the foster care system in the United States. And a lot of them are situations like that where they, they, their parents have signed away legal custody and they don't have anybody anymore where they still have an available guardian, biological, that um, has signed away their rights because they already have two legal guardians. But a situation like that happens and then they have nobody and they go into the foster care system. So this bill will help prevent children from going into the foster care system. So that's what this bill is based on. And four other states in the U.S. have actually uh, passed this bill as well. So along with that, a 
adoption rate in the U.S., I mean, it's 2.1 billion children already. So the family structure is just, it's changing. You don't have just mom, dad have kids, and then that, you know, you have divorces, you have adoptions, you have same-sex marriages and things like that. Um, my second claim um, is that a lot of people assume that, um, that it's going to be, um, there was speculation about this bill in particular because um, there was a bill like this that did not, that was vetoed last year. But that, that bill in particular, there was no limit on how many parents, and this bill has four different, um, four parents that are allowed. And they all have to meet legal standards. So you can't just have a girlfriend or a grandma or a, you know, a godmom just walk in. They have to provide some kind of um, steady income, um, stability for the child, being able to feed and nurture and provide um, clothing and extracurricular activities and such things like that. Um, so, in conclusion, Senator Mark uh, Leto, who wrote the measure, um, quoted, the structure of today's families is evolving. The courts need the ability to recognize this change. So there I conclude that the bill Governor Brown passed is allowing, and allowing more than two legal parents is beneficial to the state of California. All right, well, interesting timing on the issue, right, after the speech you had before. Uh, you know, that's kind of cool. Um, I think you need to be a little bit clearer at the beginning of the speech what the bill is that you're talking about and explain what it ends up doing as you get into the speech because it seems like it's being revealed as we go along instead of at the beginning of the presentation exactly what the goal of the bill was, what it does, and then you're kind of giving us the argument that says there is a need for this, uh, but we got to know what the need for you know, the need for what first, and it just it just felt like it was a little ambiguous. Now the further you got into it, I think it got a little bit clearer. I'm still a little uncertain as to why somebody to be a legal guardian has to be designated as a parent, and if there's a law, for instance, just just the for instance situation uh, of the case that was being used to justify making this change. Uh, the, the father gave up his legal uh, rights so that they could be adopted, I guess, in the, in the other relationship. I guess that's what was going on. Uh, but if the father maintained a relationship with the child, would a court or would the uh, foster system not be willing to place the child with that? You know, I, I'm not sure what the what what the reasoning on that is, and why they make that decision. Is, is it precluded, or is it just not easily allowed? In other words, it's it's you know, if it's a parent or a grandparent or something like that, it seems like that would be a natural thing that you just go, oh, that's okay. But if you look at this situation, say, well, we're in this situation, but if it's against the rules to do that then I can see a clear need for the bill. If, if it's just like there was problem in this situation, then I'm thinking, well, are we really passing a bill just because of this one case? How frequently does this kind of stuff come up? It would be you know, a little bit more useful to know those things. I thought you did a nice job uh, getting us interested in the subject, telling us your personal experience, explaining how complicated families can be. Uh, you do want to give us some source citations on those statistics. I'm sitting, you know, I, I, you know, the number of divorces, for instance, I'm not doubting that there are a large number of divorces. It might be 75% of new marriages get divorced. I, maybe that's the number that we're referring to. But you should tell us that and you should give us the source citation on it. You take it as a presupposition and I'm sitting around going, well, I'm, you know, just talk about those reservation issues. You know, I, I've got maybe two dozen people that I know that are married and one of them is divorced. <laughs> 
in that time. And, I'm, and I know that statistics are different than that, but you know, when you're talking about families and that sort of thing, so I need to know a little bit more, what does this statistic represent? Does it represent you know, failure in the first year of divorce, a fail, failure at once the first child is born? I'm sure that there's some explanation of what that 75% number is, because that's at least half again as large as the numbers that I've heard before, where it was half of all marriages. So give us a source citation on that. I thought you did okay, uh, like I said, giving, giving us the details on the second example. That worked pretty well. The structure, um, there's no preview of what the structure is, but you did have a couple of signposts in the body of the speech. So you want to lay it out for us at the beginning a little bit more. Like I said, there's so much background stuff and the story that goes on at the beginning, it takes up a lot of time. So that creates a little bit of a problem. I thought you did a nice job speaking to the audience, though. All right, sorry it's taken so long. Just 